Hey everybody. So in this video, we're still talking about solving inequalities. So here we have a multi-step inequality. Now, when we're done, they want us to graph this on a number line, and then they want us to express this in interval notation. This is a very common notation, and this is the, probably the most popular one that you'll see in higher level math. All right, so let's get started here. Remember, anytime you're working with these, the first thing you want to do is combine your X's, but we can't do that yet because we need to distribute because we don't know what this final quantity is going to be. So let's take this two and distribute it to the four. And remember, you also had to distribute to everything in the parentheses. So here, this will be 3X plus 8X plus 4. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4. My inequality does not change. And here I'll have 2 times 6 and 2 times the 1. So 2 times 6 is going to give me 12x. 2 times 1 is going to give me 2. Now what I want to do is combine like terms where I can. So I see that I have a 3x here and I have an 8x here. That's going to give me 11. So here I have 11x. This is going to be plus 4. This is less than or equal to. There's really nothing to combine here, so I can leave it as 12x plus 2. Now what I want to do is I want to put the x's on one specific side. When you're dealing with inequalities, it's easiest to read if you can keep the X's on the left, typically. Now, you can do that way, or I know some of you like the rule where if you're going to move X's, always move the smaller one. So that way you're always working with a positive X. You can do either. So here, let's move the 11 since it's smaller and we're working with a positive X. So if I subtract 11 from both sides, so here I'll subtract 11X, subtract, 11x, this is going to give me 4, let me draw a line to separate this, is less than or equal to x plus 2. Now I can subtract the 2 from both sides, and I'm getting 2 is less than or equal to x. Now, when you're graphing the inequality, it's easiest to do this if X is on the left. So look at my inequality. You see how it almost looks that, like that inequality right there, that less than or equal to is a mouth, and that mouth is eating the X. If I swap, the mouth still eats the X. That, or you can almost think about this like an arrow. Like if that were a little arrow like that, that arrow is pointing to the two, the arrow still has to point to the two like that. So both of these are the same thing. Two is less than or equal to X, or I could say X is greater than or equal to two. Same thing. Now they want us to graph this on a number line. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna draw a number line that goes forever in both directions. And we're going to indicate the value of two. Now we talked about this some in a prior video, but let's think about this x is greater than 2. Okay, well, here's some numbers greater than 2. So this is 3, here's 4, here's 5, and let's write some numbers that are smaller than 2. So here, this is 1, and here we have 0. That's going to bother me. There we go. That's a little better. Now, inequalities, you've talked about this for a long time because this is the same way you learn how to do little riddles. So if I said, think of a number, it can be 2 or bigger. Can I pick the number one? No, it's not bigger than two. Could I pick the number zero? No, it's not bigger than two. So it's looking like nothing to the left of two is going to work. You have, right here, you have to pick two or a bigger number. Now in this example, that equal to, greater than or equal to, that means I can pick the number two if I want to. So here, we're still gonna indicate with our circle, but because I can pick the number two, I'm going to shade in my circle. And now I'm gonna indicate all the values larger than two. Okay, well three, four, and five are all larger than two. And if I were looking at a number line, anything to the right of two is larger. So this is how I'd graph it on a number line. Now, interval notation. This, can al this always confuses students for some reason. So anytime you're working with interval notation, 
right here. You see how that's greater than or equal to in here, your circle's filled in. If that's the case, that value is going to get a bracket. So bracket means included. A parenthesis means it's not included. So this would be an open circle or if that were just greater than. So here we have a bracket, two, now, where does the solution set stop? Two to what number? Well, this goes on forever. So what represents forever? Infinity. So here I'm going to write infinity. Now, infinity will always get a parenthesis because you cannot count to infinity. So you have no idea what value to include. So infinity is never going to get a bracket. All right. So we'll just erase this, and that's it. Here is my solution. Here is my solution graphed on a line, and here it is in interval notation. So here, just like our prior example, we need to distribute, and then we need to combine our x's. So here, the 3 will go to the x. It will also go to the 1. So I have 3x plus 3 plus 11 is less than my negative 2 will go to the x and it will also go to the 13. So I have negative 2x minus negative 2 and 13 is 26. So here, before I start moving things to other sides of the inequality, I'm going to combine like terms. So I'll combine this 3 and this 11. That's going to give me 14. So I have 3x plus 14 is less than negative 2x minus 26. So here again, when you're moving or you have the option to move the x's, always move the one that's smaller. That's going to make it easiest to me. So negative 2 is smaller than positive 3. So I'm going to do the opposite of what they're doing. Because they're subtracting, I will add. So I'm going to add 2x. And then here I will get 5x plus 14 is less than negative 26. Now I can move my numbers to the other side. So I will subtract 14. So here I have 5x is less than, and then this is going to be negative 40. Now to get x by itself, I'll just divide by 5. And it looks like I have x is less than negative 8. So just like the last problem, they want us to graph this on a number line and to use interval notation. So we're going to start on our number line at negative 8. So here I have a number line that goes forever in both directions. And I'll just put negative 8 in the middle. Now, I'm going to put numbers that are larger than negative 8 over here. So this is negative 7. That's larger than negative 8. Negative 6, negative 5. And then on the other side, I'll do numbers that are smaller. Negative 9, negative 10. Right? These numbers are smaller than negative 8. These are bigger. So x is less than negative 8. So think about this in terms of the games you used to play. Pick a number that has to be smaller than negative 8. Can I pick negative 9? Yes. Can I pick negative 10? Yes. Smaller than negative 8. Can I pick 7? No. Could I pick negative 6? No. Negative 5? Also no. None of these on the right work. Now, this is less than. You cannot pick it. So I'm going to just draw a circle that is not closed, and I'm going to say all numbers that are smaller than negative 8. So here, here are all my numbers that are smaller than negative 8. Now, interval notation. What I've seen a lot of students do is they'll do this. Oh, okay, I can't pick negative 8. So here, this is negative 8. And this goes to the left forever. Oh, so that's negative infinity. So negative 8 to negative infinity, and they'll do something like this. Okay, you can't do that. Here's why. Interval notation is written the same way you read a graph, and we read a graph the same way we read a book, left to right. 
So if I'm looking here from the left, I'm coming from negative infinity and going to the right, I stop at negative eight. So these are backwards and that can be tricky. You never start at a number and go to negative infinity when you're talking about interval notation because interval notation, you're only referring to the X's. All right, so here, let's change this. Remember, you cannot include negative infinity. You can't count to it. You'll never get to negative infinity. So it never gets a bracket. So here we'll have a parenthesis and we'll say negative infinity. And then we will stop at negative eight. Negative eight is not included because I can't pick it because of that inequality. So here we'll just say parenthesis. And that's it. We have solved our inequality, we've graduated on a number line, and here we have it in interval notation.